Welcome back to Often Tactical. So today I'm going to be reviewing another Go 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 laser range finder. And this one here is, and I'll get you the model number. This is the uh, GSO3 uh, 1000M. So it's, a, it's rated at 1000 meters. And the previous one I reviewed, and I'll put the link right up here so you can watch that. I'll be using that one as the kind of a, the bench rest. It's, I think, the same model. Uh, yeah, the GSO3. The GSO uh, it's the same same models, same same uh, form and fit. So this one's rated at 900 yards, and this one is rated at 1,000 meters. Uh, and I think they market this one towards the hunting industry, or the hunting uh, side of things. And this one is marketed more towards uh, golfers. Um, I think that's how they do it. And they have different color schemes, but supposedly they have different ranges. I'm gonna, as I said, I'm going to be using the uh, the original one I reviewed, the 900 uh, yard unit. I'm going to be using this as a benchmark since I did some pretty extensive testing on its accuracy out to about 300 yards. So I'll be using this to, to uh, check uh, the 1,000 yard unit, which we'll be reviewing today uh, for accuracy. Uh, but I will say that I was very disappointed. It's, it's rated at 900 yards. When I reviewed it, it only had about a three to 400 yard practical range. So I'm hoping that this unit, uh, which is a, like about $20 more expensive, I'm hoping this unit will give you a lot better, uh, will give us better performance uh, out further. But we'll find out. First, I want to do a quick disclaimer. Uh, while we are not uh, affiliated with Go, Go, Go at all, they did send me this unit. Uh, I don't receive a commission or anything on it. We're not paid to review this, but uh, they did send it to me, so we're going to try to do an unbiased review here. I just want to let you guys know uh, where we got this from. I went out of the way. Let's get started. Okay, so a little bit later I'll go over how these work, the different modes they have, uh, and what you can do with them as far as the, uh, the, as I said, the different modes they have. But right now we're going to test the accuracy of their 1,000 uh, meter unit against the already, the, against my benchmark unit right here, which is the previous one, the 900 uh, yard unit I tested before. So I'm at approximately 100 yards here, and uh, I'm going to check the range with our 100 meter unit. I mean, with our 900-yard uh, unit, which we've already verified, and we're looking at 90, 98, looking at about 97 yards. Now I'll take our 1,000-meter uh, unit here, which we're reviewing, and let's see, 96.5. So a little discrepancy. Look at 96.5, and. Here we're looking at 97 point, let's see, 90, so about 97 and 96.5, so about half a yard of error, they're both on yards, so it's quite close, half a yard at 100 yards, uh, which is not that bad, actually, if it'll measure out the distance. So let's, uh, I'm going to go out and I'm going to check it at a, uh, I, have a I have an object at 500 yards, so I'm going to check the distance to that object, we'll do it with both range finders. The, uh, 900 yard unit, I don't think we'll reach because I tested it before, uh, but we'll test the 1,000 yard unit now and see if we can reach out to 500 yards uh, to house. Okay, so let me get you on this house. These are about 6x uh, uh, magnification, and uh, I'm going to find it. Let's see. There we go. I'm, I'm on mode 1. 538, guys. It's, so it's actually working at 500 yards. Okay, that's really, really good. And we're, so we're seeing some different stuff, but it's, we're definitely picking something up at 500 yards. I looked at a, I looked at a map and I got that distance uh, to that house uh, at right around 500 yards, and our rangefinder seems to be working at that. So let's pick something a little further away and see if it'll do it. Okay, so now we're going to see what this rangefinder will really do. So uh, you'll see a right uh, in our viewfinder here uh, the the large white house you can see uh, in the foreground. That's at about uh, 400 yards, and we'll quickly uh, lays that seat and <clears throat> double check that and then the house you see in the background with the uh, camper trailer next to it in the center of the screen that is right around 900 uh, yards away so that is uh, right near the 1,000 meter uh, limit and we're gonna see if we can get at least some sort of reading off of that house you can see there's some trees around it um, over there on the right side so it's gonna be a bit tricky to get but we're gonna try okay so I'm on mode one we're getting an easy 400 yards, 397, off this white side of this 400 yard house. There it is, 410, no, it got 470, okay, that must have been the field. There we go, 396, 468, 396, 396. It's saying on the edge of the house is 470, there we go. That tree branch there, it's 
putting at 300. So 467 yards. Okay, that's that house. Now let's see if we can get the house in the background at 900 yards. See, we're not getting it. No, so 467 yards. So it's working uh, quite good at the 500. We'll lay this house here again. Okay, now just to show you that it works at 500 yards. We'll lay this house. There we go, 573. Okay, so that's had 500, about 500, uh, 566 yards. Uh, this house right here is picking up no problem uh, at about 460 yards. We got no problem on this house. 900 yards, uh, this house back here, we're not picking it up. So right now we're looking at around 600 yards effective range. I'm going to try to get an object about 700 yards away and see if it will measure that. Okay, so I have uh, a target to range. It's actually some trees uh, right through here. And uh, they're at about 800 yards, and we're going to zap them. There we go. Second try, 813. Let's see. Hasn't done it. There, did it that time. 814. Eight ten. So we're not getting total consistency. Only about a third of the time does it pick it up. But we're getting a good range measurement against actual trees, uh, actual forest though, down there at eight hundred yards, which is really good. We're not doing anything at a thousand yards, so it looks like eight hundred yards is getting near your practical range. Now five hundred yards, we get perfect consistency, as I'll show you here. Five forty two against this house. Five forty six. Five forty one. Five seventy two. I think we're seeing around the edge of the house. That's the tree right there. Against the house itself, we're getting 540. There we go. So it's, it's working quite well at 550 yards. Okay, so I think I've established uh, in the testing I've done here, in a little bit I showed you, that our maximum range of the 1,000 meter unit is about 800 yards. And uh, compare that, of course, to the 900 yard unit, which was a maximum range of around 400 yards. So that's about twice the range we're getting, which is much better. Uh, I don't know if that's a fluke because of this particular unit, uh, if it's unit by unit, or if that is uh, just because it's a different model. The exterior is the same, pretty much. Uh, the display is the same. I can't tell the difference, except that it has a different model number and it's working much better. So we're looking at probably a practical range of about 600 yards uh, because we didn't get total consistency at 800 yards. We were against a pretty matte uh, forest finish, but actually the forest picks up uh, is pretty easy to pick up compared to some other things uh, such as you know dark roofs on buildings are very difficult to pick up shingles and other things like that. So 600 yards, we're looking at this pretty safe number. I'm going to do some more. Com uh, I'm going to compare it now some more to the uh, 900 yard unit, which I double checked before to a tape. I'm going to go out to 300 yards, check it against our plywood target, and uh, see how consistent it is between measurements. Okay, there's the target way down there at 300 yards. We were right there at 300 yards. I've actually checked to the other range finder and after a couple tries it gave me a reading, the 900 yarder, and it is 300 yards uh, on our range. So there's the plywood and I'm going to get it lined up for you here. I'm going to shoot the plywood. 301. It's pretty close. Three hundred, three hundred and two, three hundred point six, three hundred and one, two hundred and three. Okay, three hundred and one. So you can see we're getting uh, basically perfect results here as far as accuracy goes on the target. Okay, now I'm not sure if I can get this on the screen for you, but I just want to show you a practical application. Uh, out here in this field, there it is. Uh, we have a turkey. Uh, if you can just see it there, it's really far away. And I'm going to take a shot at it with a range finder and try to pick its range up. Picked it right up, 419. 422. 424. 423. 428. Yeah, okay, there we go. Just like that, uh, 
it gave all the ratings and I'll try to get that for you. Let's see, 418. I'm not seeing the turkey there. 404. 423. So you can see the consistency we're picking that up with. 430. Uh, very easily picking up uh, up 430 yards on a grass. We're looking at a grass uh, grass slope there. So it's a slope uh, that's getting away from us. Uh, so it's sloping away from us. So it's very easy, uh, greatly depending where we point the range finder. Of course I shake her out at this range quite a bit. So uh, it's working great on grass 430 yards. Okay, I know it's really hard to uh, see through the rangefinder, but hopefully that kind of gives you an idea of what it does. But uh, let me just summarize for you before we move on what we just learned. So from what I can tell, the rangefinder is within just a couple yards of being actually accurate uh, of the actual distance. Uh, and I measured it out to 300 yards. So beyond that, I don't have an exact range measured, uh, but I'm guessing it's pretty close compared to, because I've gone on maps, measured the distance to my targets, the houses I'm measuring to, and uh, everything's very consistent. So as far as uh, useful range, and this is going to be like the most important thing, second to accuracy, and most of your range finders being digital are going to be quite accurate. Uh, but the actual, the uh, detection range, it's sensitivity to the range finder of this, of this uh, thousand, um, it's a thousand meter unit. The sensitivity, I'm getting about, uh, I would say consistently, I'm getting a 600 yard range, and I've measured things up to 800 yards, so I'm going to have to just go with uh, practical distance. I'm going to have to say 600 yards, uh, just because at 800 yards, we're not getting complete consistency, but at 600 yards, it's, it's quite consistent against trees, grass, and uh, structures, which is your main primary thing you're going to be measuring range to. Uh, if you're in an urban environment, uh, there'll be a lot of structures, obviously. Uh, so I would say 600 yards, you might be able to push it out to 800. Uh, definitely not much further than 800. Uh, you're not going to range further than that. So I would say 600 yards and you are accurate, which is definitely getting into a useful uh, distance. So the 1,000 yard number they're advertising is definitely, uh, they should cut that down a little bit. It's definitely a little bit high. Okay, so this, I'm going to just go, go over the uh, physical, physical construction of the range finder first. Uh, it's exactly the same as some of their, of their other models that I've reviewed. Uh, that I showed you the video in the beginning, the link. Uh, it runs off of a CR2 uh, battery, which is right here in back. That battery is included. Battery comes right out. Uh, it would be nice if it used a CR123, but it does use a CR2, which is still a, a standard battery. So it's not a random button cell. It does, it does use a CR2. Let's get that ribbon back in there and close it up. Um, as you can see here, the exterior is painted on this one. It's painted coyote brown. I think there's some other colors available. This one they sold as like a 12, I saw it as, a, as their hunting range finder, like their maximum range, a $100 hunting range finder. Uh, and the, it's actually rated at 1,000 meters is its range. So the, as far well as the, the construction goes, you have a diopter adjustment right here, which works quite well. You can get a very crisp image uh, on the screen as well as your readout. You got a power button and a mode button. So the power button, these are both just quick uh, uh, momentary push buttons here. They have a nice tactile feel. So the power button, you press that to turn it on and to range. You can push and hold it or just press it briefly to take your range. Uh, and then the mode button swap between mode 1, 2, and 3. Now let's talk about that now. So uh, I am now, right now, in mode 1. You can see that M1 over there. When I press my power button, this is what it turns on to. And this is just giving me distance. And you can see the little Y there. That's yards. If I want to convert that to meters, I press and hold the, mo the mode button, which is the forward button. And so I'll press the power button again to turn it back on. And it turns off after 20 seconds. I push and hold that, and you'll see it'll swap to meters. So now uh, our measurements are in meters, not yards. So of course I want to be in yards, so I'm going to push and hold that mode button until I go back to yards. Okay, now let's talk about the other mode. So this is just simple distance. This is the mode you're going to be using for everything, uh, but we'll talk about the other modes anyway. So I'm going to press my mode button briefly, and you'll see we swap to mode 2, M2. And you'll see some other little symbols down there appeared on the bottom of the screen. So what this does is this is for golfing, I believe. Uh, it basically like estimates your, let me turn it back on, estimates what your, uh, your, your, your distance, your simulates your distance. So if we're looking up, and I'm going to press my power button briefly to take the distance, 306 yards of those trees, and then you can see down below, uh, it says 337 yards and 6 degrees. So we're looking 6 degrees up, which could be interesting. Uh, I'll shoot that again. So we're looking 6 degrees up, uh, there we go, 5 degrees this time, 330 yards would be the equivalent flat distance uh, to throw that golf ball, as far as I can tell. I might be wrong about that, but if we're looking down, uh, I'll look down here and I'll do it again. 
we're looking at minus two degrees down. So you can see our actual distance is 32 yards and the uh, equivalent distance you'll see is 31 yards. So it's less because it's easier to, to, to uh, bat that ball down than it is to up. So that's, that's golfing mode. So that's not really too useful for anything I can think of. Um, it does have an interesting feature. Other than doing those angle measurements, it does have a, uh, it, it'll pick up pins. So I'll show that over here with the T post. Okay, so here's the other interesting feature of golfing mode that could be useful. You'll see I have a tee post here. Uh, that flashing circle there says 46 yards to the tee post. Now I'm going to swap to mode 1 and try to get a range. See, it says 153 yards, 148, 152. It's very difficult to get a range to that post. So I go to mode 2, and this is angle mode, but you could ignore all the, the worthless angle stuff. And I'm going to press the button, and you see that flashing circle? It gives me the smallest range that it measures. This can be a, a bad thing if you're trying to look through trees. But in this case, it's 46 yards, and I'll do it again. And it really consistently, uh, there it says 46 yards. So it's, it's, it very, uh, very consistently pulls out that distance, uh, quite amazingly, actually. It looks at the smallest distance and gives you that, that object. That's made for looking at golf flags, but it can work for looking at someone standing in a big field or anything else like that, uh, where you need to be able to pull their distance out. So that's the useful thing with golfing mode that I find. Uh, let's see. There we go, 46 yards. That's the useful thing with golfing mode. The angle correction and stuff, uh, that's worthless to me. That might be useful to you, but uh, if you're not a golfer, that's not going to do you much good. So let's go to mode 3. And mode 3 is speed mode, and it doesn't, not going to do anything right now. Uh, but this just measures the speed of objects going away. But mode 1 is what you want to use. It actually gives you your distance. You can see 152 yards of that tree. So that's, uh, those are the modes. And here's the case that came to the unit. It's not a hard case, it's a soft case. It's got a belt loop, it gets the job done. Uh, it's got a magnetic strap on it. Not as nice as the hard uh, case that came with the 900 yard unit, um, but it's, it's still fully functional and the rangefinder itself is working much better. Okay, that's about all I can say uh, I have for you today. So we're looking at about a six to 800 yard range. It, it is accurate in our testing. It's quite consistent. There's definitely a little variation, uh, but it's more than enough you need for any shooting you're gonna be doing. Um, it has the different modes on it went over. Um, you're going to be using mode one primarily just for getting your range, possibly mode two if you have a, you're trying to pick somebody out of a field. Uh, but now we're, we're looking at this go, go, go range finder. This is their most expensive unit. It's a, I got it for, it's, uh, the price on this right now is a hundred dollars, uh, which is more than the previous unit I reviewed at about 80 bucks. Um, and it's definitely worth getting if you're trying to get a range finder from Go 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 because of the extra range, a 300 to 400 yard range on a range finder, unless maybe you are actually golfing, uh, I don't know. But if you are trying to do shooting, that's not going to do you very much good. Uh, you're going to need something a little further out than that when bullets start slowing down and dropping off. So at six to 800 yards, you're definitely beginning to do that. Uh, so it's, it's definitely a viable option for a range finder. Uh, and, as, and as far as quality operation, I haven't had this one very long. But our 900-yard uh, model, which I did a review on a while ago, we've been using. It's still fully functional. The battery, original battery, uh, battery hasn't died yet. It hasn't broken at all. Uh, so quality doesn't seem that bad. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed today's video. hope it's helpful. Uh, the, as I said, the uh, manuals it comes with are kind of chinglishy. Uh, so they're kind of hard to follow. So maybe this video will help you follow that a little bit better. Um, so if you enjoyed, uh, enjoyed today's video, be sure to like, uh, comment below. And I'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching.